All right, friends, we're back. Your favorite podcast show of the week. It's Location Weekly. It's episode number 629. And we're recording on July the 17th. Uh, Brianna, how are you? I am mentally already on vacation. I'm good. I am departing for uh, South America. So I'm very excited. Um, but just like the last minute chaos of, you know, wrapping up all the loose ends from work and the home life. So um, I'm excited and, and glad to be going on vacation, but still not quite disconnected. <laughs> How are yeah. you? I'm good. Yeah, it's been a busy week uh, work wise and just trying to catch up, you know, on things and uh, but did manage to uh, also check out a Blue Jays game the other day. So that was fun. Um and they won. So, you know, that's, this is good. Uh, yeah. They're on a little bit of a, of a winning streak. Don't want to jinx it, but you know, <laughs> we're back in the, uh, in the, in the wild card running. So there we go. Um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, we've, uh, thank you for doing this before you take off on your holiday. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll get through this. We've got four stories as usual and I'll let you kick it off. All right. So I don't know if you're a big fan of macarons or however you say that. I always feel like that's such a weird word. Some people say macarons, some people say macarons. I don't know, whatever the correct Parisian accent is there to say them. Um, I'm lacking that. But haagen has put this whole campaign around their new ice cream range, which is all about different macarons. Um, and so this is launching and not in the US. So if you're a fan here, too bad. You need to travel to get it. But UK, France, and then they recently rolled out across Europe, Asia, Latin America, and Middle East as well. This is part of their Summer of Amour campaign. So they are trying to show up where people are looking for love, including these romantic destinations like Paris, London, um, and some others. And, um, you know, so examples that they're doing, they have offered this like pop-up traveling photo studio with a mobile love bus. Uh, and that's in partnership with the Parisian photography uh, company called Studio Harcourt. And um, they also have a red and pink double-decker tour bus that's like promoting this haagen partnership with um uh, which is with Hermé, which is like inviting con consumers to capture their love, some of Paris's most romantic spots. And then the photos are showcased with um, these developed love filters. Um, so they're doing this in a few different areas. They're also doing um, an exclusive party at the um, Palais de Tokyo ahead of the Parisian Grand Slam event, which um, they did this, I should say, that took place at the end of May, beginning of June. Um, and they saw some of the top tennis stars and tastemakers uh, trying these different brands, you know, ice cream flavors, that collection. Um, and so they're really just like aiming to celebrate the spirit of romance throughout the summer season while bringing this like local twist. Um, so they've got, you know, obviously even Shanghai, they've got this Parisian love themed garden party that took place in, in Madrid. Um, they have a spoonful of Macron event that happened in Hong Kong. So just kind of like all of these fun little pop ups um, where they are trying to incorporate, I would say, like love, ice cream, macarons, you know, celebrities as well. So it's kind of cute. You know, I think that there's like a trend in some of these um, consumer brands and some of the pop ups we've seen lately. Maybe we'll talk about it in a following week, but um, there's like Maybelline's been doing tons of stuff in London and even here in New York with like these buses that look like lipsticks and like eyeshadows and uh, uh, mascaras. I should know these things. And it's like, it's fun. You know, I think it makes that brand and the ice cream brand here with Hagen dazs like a little bit more memorable and connectable and it's more experiential. So, um, you know, General Mills, I think is trying to, to have this like experiential campaign where you not only get to maybe taste the ice cream, but you actually get to kind of experience the theme that they have around it. So it's fun. Yeah, I, I, I like it. I think it's super fun. Um, and I, I think from, um, location point of view like kind of going around to all these different you know sort of love themed uh places in europe i th it, i think it's kind of interesting and the one in london uh they call it the love map 
Um, and you basically are guided through the city to all these romantic spots, such as Primrose Hill or the British Museum. Um, and then, you know, you can kind of, obviously there's photos and tastings and all these kinds of things tied into that that are shareable on Instagram and all, you know, all our favorite channels. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's super fun. I think it's, um, you know, good for the brand to do this. I think it would be interesting, um, like if you're in, in one of these cities like London, for example, like if there was a kind of element to it where you can kind of like knock off like a whole bunch of them, you know what I mean? Like, like a tracker kind of piece where, you know, yeah, I did that one or, you know, and then you another one. So kind of building your, your list of, of dates, I guess, for the summer, you know, through visiting all these different uh, spots. I think, you know, it's, it's super fun though. Um, so, I mean, technology wise, obviously not a ton to it here, um, but, you know, creativity wise and location wise, I think it's, it's, it's very interesting. And yeah, I like that they're doing it in kind of a whole bunch of different uh, major cities around the world, just not here in North America. So no, maybe no. we'll get our turn next year. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, so moving over to AI now. So there's a company out there called Vidby or Vidby. Uh, I don't know how you, how you, how you pronounce that. V-I-D-B-Y. Uh, they're a Swiss um, AI startup uh, with some uh, background in, uh, in the Ukraine as well. Uh, and they specialize in AI-powered translation and dubbing services for 75 different languages. And so they've rolled out this new uh, set of tools that are really aimed at uh, video content creators, YouTube uh, you know, creators and things like that, that kind of take their technology now um, and kind of you know, make it so that you know, people can kind of take their video content and take advantage of the language localization uh, capabilities within um, you know their platform, so you know you can basically take your your video and then kind of run it through their system, and then it'll you know you can it doesn't even have to be the whole video. One of the cool things is you can split you know and just localize different sections of your content, um, you know for um, you know as opposed to doing the, the whole video. So it could just be a part of a video or the entire video. And then you decide okay, which one you want to localize, or that can also save on costs. You know, for for you know how you know what people have to do with this, and if you're co-creating uh, with more than one you know sort of uh, developer, let's say, or creator that you work with, um, you can actually split the bill uh, through their platform uh, and share the costs as well. So uh, kind of interesting, um, you know. We don't talk about this kind of technology a lot, but the, you know, I think. We all know that like there's so much content being created um, and being able to sort of spread that content as broadly as possible uh, and have, you know, as many followers or fans or whatever it is your goal is uh, audience that you're trying to create, you know, obviously, if you have the ability to localize that uh, into different languages or different communities, um, you know, the, the the better your chances. Right. Um, so I think it's, it's very interesting. I could see even from, uh, you know, my company, like on the tech. Uh, startup side of things is we're kind of building some content and some promotional materials because we do operate in uh, in other countries outside of Canada um, you know the ability to localize you know the language and do those kinds of things on top of the content that we've created I think is, is interesting so yeah I think that more and more of these like content creation platforms and like bringing the capabilities to do more faster is going to be like really important um, especially as there's so many content creators now, like there's such a, a large market for it. I mean, everybody's a content creator. Here we are producing a, a podcast, right? Like we are content creators in essence as well. So I think that like more and more there's um, a growing market and a growing need to be able to customize or um, kind of like share different uh, pieces of of that content and um, like that production of it. So I think this is interesting. So I, I think that they're like right on time with with this um, this product and these features. So yeah. All right. So here's one that I find very interesting because I think it takes me back to um, my days and uh, my last life and IP intelligence and and that localized data sets, uh, but Google One, the VPN by Google One specifically, is getting an update at the end of this month. Um, what's been highlighted is that they are set to change the default IP address region from broad to local. 
So this is going to improve users' online experiences, which will help facilitate some of these location-based experiences and services. But it's also going to um, allow consumers who want to set up and use the broad IP address region by default to um, be able to choose that option as well. And what does that mean? That means, that means for consumers, one, it helps them maybe reduce the likeliness of their location being tracked um, so they can choose that. Um, but it's also maybe making things that, you know, hacking a little bit less, those attacks a little bit like, you know, they're a little more protected from that, I would say, versus that precise location via the device. So I think that, um, you know, for example, they would have like their country in place versus something that's more of like a localized region. I think what's important to note is like there's some pros and cons to this. So for the consumers being able to have that localized experience, maybe it's for your banking app or, you know, making sure that you are logging in from where you should be and you don't have impossible travel, meaning you logged in one moment from one place and another moment to another place. I think it's really important that that still has the access to your location because it is a protection for consumers in that banking and financial industry. Or when you want to perhaps like navigate to specific inventory or the closest store or localized offers, I think there's so many added value benefits there. But I think that more and more, you know, consumers are being very guarded about their privacy and rightfully so. Um, and so once this update rolls out, you know, users are going to be able to set that to either that default option to a local IP address or that broader one. Um, so I, I think there's going to be um, some major impacts on those content providers or publishers, perhaps that are capturing location uh, via apps today um, without providing a good a good experience in return for that. And then also some of the data providers that are capturing that level of information and that exchange of data. Um, I think they're, that's going to be very impactful at a large scale as well, because this is, again, Google VPN. We're not talking about like a small set of, of users here. This is a, a large impact. So I think this is very interesting. We've heard like that more and more these IP addresses are going to be masked, maybe or truncated, if you will, to be able to help mask the end consumers. And um, yeah, I think I think it's an interesting test that we're going to see how does this impact user experience as well as consumers like feeling of, hey, my my privacy is important. So what do you think? Yeah, I'm 100% I'm with you. I think there is a balance here. I like that they're kind of not just saying, hey, you can't have the broad uh, IP anymore. You have that you know, at your discretion, you can choose that option. But I think, you know, the plus here obviously is, is by being able to localize that and say, hey, I'm in New York right now, or I'm whatever, wherever I am, um, you know, to be able to access, you know, more accurate, you know, location-based offers and services and experiences. And I, th and I think, you know, finding that balance, I think is going to be what's interesting here, right? Between, you know, those that want to do that and the, those that, that, uh, that don't and um I, I, I you know it'd be interesting if they were you know once this all rolls out if they were to publish some stats on this uh on you know which side people fall on um that would be very interesting i think but uh i doubt i doubt they'll release any kind of data like that but uh yeah i think it's great um you know certainly you know we we know the, what the value of location based services can bring when you're using them correctly like weather data and things like that so, uh, you know, hopefully this is a, a step in the right direction and, you know, and that they're kind of still appealing to the privacy angles. So I like it. Yep. Okay, uh, final story now. So this one's kind of an interesting one so talking about privacy. Uh, so WhatsApp um, has a, a kind of interesting campaign that they put together with BBDO in New York. Um, and they're what they're trying to do is kind of uh, shine a light on the fact that you know they're so privacy centric now and and all their new privacy features within their app um and so what they did was is they took these sort of iconic homes um that uh you know are very often photographed or you know people go on tours to get photos you know outside of these homes uh, of celebrities and, and people like that. And they put these privacy shades um, that are like out of home screens, uh, essentially, you know, in the uh, in the windows kind of thing. So some of these homes include like the New Girl apartment in LA, uh, 
the Full House uh, Painted Ladies uh, in San Francisco or, and Tom's Diner uh, from Seinfeld in New York. Um, and so, yeah, they're really just trying to, you know, focus on uh, having people realize that, you know, um, they're calling it the prying eyes campaign, like, you know, these people, real people live here, they're entitled to their privacy. Uh, and they're just kind of, you know, taking these iconic locations and then, you know, uh, using this stunt, if you will, to kind of show that uh, you know, WhatsApp is so privacy compliant. And, you know, in addition to kind of the campaign itself, um, they now have these features within the app um, that are, uh, you can silence unknown callers, uh, you have end-to-end -end encryption on calls, you can hide your uh, online presence, um, and all these kinds of things that they've added to, um, you know, the privacy side of what you can do in WhatsApp. So, you know, um, a technology update on the privacy side with a kind of an interesting marketing campaign, I think, to kind of remind people that, uh, you know, that uh, privacy is important. So any thoughts on this one? Yeah, um, well, I like this one a little bit better, maybe than one of the other ads that um, they did about it was like a privacy ad. I don't know if you saw this one where it was like somebody walked through the gate and unlocked it and locked it back and then walked through and then they zoom out, but the gate, there's no gate. It's just like the walkthrough. Okay. So you could obviously just walk around the gate and go to wherever they were going to as an open pasture. And I was like, that kind of is almost saying the opposite of privacy. It's saying like, you just walk around. It was very interesting. And I was like, what are they trying to say? Because if they're trying to highlight their privacy aspects, like, hmm, interesting, like, <laughs> campaign for that. Um, but I, I think that, like, it's, it, look, I think that everybody's, like, trying to, I don't know, put in their, their bet on this whole, like, privacy, like, hey, it's important to us, regardless of who it is. I think it kind of started with Apple, right? And now we're seeing some of the other companies follow. Um, but, you know, for me, it's almost one of those things that like it's a it's a catch 22 when you go out and talk about like, hey, we have so much integrity as a company. It's almost like, why are you talking so much about your integrity if yeah. it should be like known that everybody has that it shouldn't be questionable. So for me, it's kind of one of those things that makes me like pause and be like, hmm, what's really going on here? But um, from a campaign perspective, sure. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Won't be on my home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. We'll put some up on your on your windows. Um, cool. All right. Well, that's our show for this week, folks. You've been listening and watching episode number six hundred and twenty nine. Thank you for your time. Please reach out if you have story ideas. Uh, if you're one of the companies we talked to uh, talked about, uh, you know, let us know. Um, uh, you know what you think. Uh, we'd love to hear from you too. Um, and we'll be back next week with another show. And have a great vacation, Fabriana. Thank you. See you soon. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.